Scarbados. Well, not the glorious sunshine we'd hoped for, but these fans come here no matter what. And, of course, there's always someone they can point the finger at. Dickie Bird, I blame you. Yeah, they're all blaming me. <laughs> I walked through the gates and they said, what's up, Dickie, what are you off for? And I'm not even up by it, I'm retired. <laughs> it's a pity, really, because yeah. this is such a great venue, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's one of the best venues in the country. I always liked Scarborough. I love playing here, Harry, and uh, I love Dunpire in here as well. It's so much tradition, and uh, the, the crowd is always wonderful, wonderful. Some great characters in the crowd. The early signs were good for Yorkshire. Hales went first over, and Sidebottom looked very useful. But Love and Cowan gradually settled, and in testing conditions, began to put a partnership together. Well, at the end of play a few months ago, Nottinghamshire finished day one on 177 for two. Look at cricket now, and Yorkshire have drawn their county championship match against Nottinghamshire at Scarborough today. Captain Andrew Gale took the honours with an incredible innings of 272. That's the third highest score by the Yorkshire batsman by a Yorkshire batsman since the war. They declared at 572 for eight. Notts made 105 for one in their second innings before a draw was declared. Next, Yorkshire made cricketing history yesterday when they played the youngest ever county side player since the Second World War. Matthew Fisher, who's just 15 and 212 days old, that bit's important, made his debut for Yorkshire in the game against Leicestershire at Scarborough. He scored 10 runs, which included two fours, but more importantly, the young bowler took his first wicket in senior cricket. Amazing. Yorkshire won the toss and elected to bat with open leaves and captain Andrew Gale showing a partnership of 145. Resuming on seven without loss after rain stopped play for the first time, Yorkshire lost opener Adam Life for 11. Phil Jacks hit 20 runs before he was caught by John Simpson off the bowling of Gareth Burke. And despite five rain interruptions, Lees and Gale led the run chase, steering Yorkshire past 200. Lee struck 11 fours in his unbeaten century, and Gale then will resume on 61, not out. 390 all out. Middlesex was 16 for one when bad lights stopped play. Sam Robson, the man out. So, Gale at the crease for a minute shy of five hours. It's 103 coming off 224 deliveries and included nine boundaries. But quickly after reaching his century, Gale was trapped LBW by Ollie Rayner. That prompted a collapse as Yorkshire lost their last five wickets for 61 runs. Middlesex suffered a blow early into their reply. Sam Robson caught by Adam Lye for just five, and they were 16 for one when bad lights stopped play after tea. Still 374 runs behind. Just to follow on against Yorkshire on day three of their county championship clash at Lords, so there were 175 all out in response to Yorkshire's first innings total of 390. Stephen Patterson and Liam Plunkett taking four wickets each at the close. Middlesex were 137 for four. Well, Middlesex resumed on 16 for one. Just three more runs were on the board before the first wicket of the day fell. Joe Denley out for two off the bowling of Ryan Sidebottom. Australian opener Chris Rogers looking to be on course for a long spell at the crease. But he was soon on his way back to the pavilion after making just 27. Neil Dexter followed five overs later. Gone for 11, LBW to Patterson. So Middlesex looking for someone to move their score on. Adam London hit three quick boundaries before he became another of Plunkett's victims. That was to leave the score on 105 for six at that stage. It was certainly Yorkshire's day and with the ball side bottom with his second wicket. James Harris trapped leg of four. The 
but it was Gareth Berg who offered the only real resistance for Middlesex. He made 54 in an innings which included eight fours before his spell at the crease came to an end. Off the bowling of Patterson, LBW, Middlesex eventually all out for 175 and forced to follow on, but didn't get much better for Middlesex at the start of their second innings. Rogers out for a duck in the fifth ball of the first over. And a recession to clinch their fourth win of the season as Middlesex were bowled out for 219 after following on. Adil Rashid was the pick of their bowlers with five for 78. Yorkshire then knocked off the five runs required in four balls to seal the 10 wicket win. After following on, Middlesex resumed four down and still 78 runs Yorkshire's first inning score. They survived 22 balls. Stephen Patterson dismissed John Simpson for 21. Ryan Sidebottom then bowled Neil Dexter to leave Middlesex six wickets down and still 60 runs behind. Middlesex did manage to add enough runs to make Yorkshire bat again before Adil Rashid claimed his fifth wicket of the innings. Yorkshire openers Adam Lythe and Alex Lees then had seven minutes available before lunch to get the runs, the five runs required. It took four balls. For Headingley this morning, nothing but brightness in the Yorkshire ranks. In the club's 150th anniversary year, they're top of the county championship. We just talked about day-to-day -day stuff and continuing as we have doing. Um, you know, we don't want to get involved in any hype of who's going to win the championship. Nothing was won by the end of June. You know, we're, we're at the halfway stage now. We'll have nine games after this. So, you know, like I said, it's just about continuing the, the good form that we have been showing and, and doing the basics right. Opponents Surrey haven't won a game all season and earlier this week parted company with their coaches. But with Kevin Peterson returning after injury and Alex Stewart now in charge, they look a different proposition. I suppose beware the wounded bull. Uh, some very, very good cricketers uh, in their side. We know the challenge that we face. Uh, it's going to be hard work, but you know we've just got to give ourselves the best chance. We've trained well, we've prepared as well as we possibly can. We're just going to go out and enjoy the challenge. Yorkshire lost the toss and were put into bat. In theory, a disadvantage with weather conditions favouring the bowlers. But Yorkshire are in the habit of defying expectations. Adam Lythe was quick to start hitting the boundaries. Lithe went on to make 41 and later skipper Andrew Gale took charge and hit a century. With a mixed forecast for the weekend, perhaps only the weather can stand in Yorkshire's way. Ian Bucknell, BBC Look North, Headingley. Uh, Gale is in superb form, isn't he? Yeah. He was joined by Gary Balance, who chipped in with 90. Great form from him the day after getting his first England call-up. After a couple of late wickets, Yorkshire closed on 292 Four, five. Their first innings at 433 for nine, Surrey closed on 53 for one. Andy Hodd was the first wicket to fall. He added just four to his overnight total before falling to Tim Lindley. Now that brought Liam Plunkett to the crease, who hit eight fours as he went on to pass 50. Andrew Gale resumed at day two unbeaten on 114 and he picked up where he left off. But just two short of 150, he was dismissed by Gary Keady. Yorkshire declared shortly after tea when Ryan Sidebottom was well caught in the deep by Peterson. He could tumble there. Well, Surrey lost one wicket before the close. Aaron Haranath yeah. edging behind off Jack Brooks. Well, in the county championship, spinner Gary Keady took seven for 99 as Surrey played out a draw against Yorkshire. Yorkshire were all out for 254 in their second innings. In reply, Surrey faced two overs before the match was called off. Well, Kevin Peterson looked in fine form in the nets this morning following his unbeaten 177 yesterday for Surrey. Keady removed Yorkshire captain Andrew Gale and debutant Jack Leaning for ducks in the first over. Plunkett hit seven fours in his 138 ball knock.
He was stumped for 68 off the bowling of Keeney, who returned his best figures since 2010. Lancashire 153 to win. They needed three of the last delivery, but could only manage two. Well, Andrew Gale got Yorkshire's innings off to a quick start, scoring 18 from 16 balls. But boundaries dried up and they needed a helping hand from Stephen Croft to get another maximum. Oh, and pounded over for six. <laughs> well, it was a brilliant effort. It was in the air for an eternity and he could have done much more. Jake's finished unbeaten though on 66 to set Lancashire 153 to win. Tom Smith led the Lancashire reply. He hit 24 off one over from Jack Brooks. Big over for Lancs this. But Richie Pyra claimed three for 15 to lead them needing 55 from six overs. Bad shot from Brown. He's letting the Yorkies back in. And then he did three off the last ball. There's going to be two, at least two. Lancashire Yorkshire have tied at Headingley. Going into last over, you know, 10 to win, you've got a power hitter there in Crofty. I thought they'd get over the line quite easily with a ball or two to spare, but um, fair play at Ryan Sidebottom, he did a fantastic job, nailed two Yorkers and got us two dots. In Derbyshire's hopes of reaching the quarterfinals were dented after they were beaten by six runs by Yorkshire, despite an impressive finish by Albie Morkel, who hit five boundaries and three sixes, sixes for Derbyshire. Yorkshire hung on for the win, though. Yorkshire were put into bat and Phil Jakes and Dan Hodgson helped them get off to a good start with a second wicket stand of 49. Gary Balance hitting a six and three fours as he made 28 off 22. But Albie Mortal took four for 25 to help restrict Yorkshire to 142 for nine. Derbyshire then lost opener Chesney Hughes to a good catch from Rich Pyra as they stumbled from 49 without loss to 67 for four. Morkel gave them hope with an unbeaten 51, but it wasn't enough. They lost by six runs. In cricket, Yorkshire remain well on top in that county championship match at Chesterfield. They amassed a total of 617. Alex Lees made 275. That's the 11th highest innings in Yorkshire's history. And the bowlers have been just as merciless, reducing Derbyshire to 94 for five at the close of play. Not a bad day for spotter cricket today.